Hello everyone, myself Madhuri Vaishampayan from Department of Bio Biotechnology. Today we are going to study about the enzymes. So what do you mean by enzymes? In day to day life, we actually deal with, we actually work with different types of enzyme. If you consider the human body, it is also having different types of reactions which are continuously going on that are considered under your metabolism. So who is actually responsible for this reaction? Yes, we can say that the enzyme which is responsible to carry out this reaction. So in case of that, these enzymes are important for acceleration to the rate of chemical reaction. Now whenever we are considering the rate of chemical reaction, this is acting as your catalyst. So what we can consider as your catalyst? which enhances the rate of reaction but it remains unchanged so that is nothing but what your catalyst in case of your enzymes these are nothing but what these are your biological catalyst order of magnitude faster than the chemical catalyst they act under the mild condition now what do you mean by mild condition they have their specific requirement specific requirement for ph specific requirement for your temperature so these are nothing but what the optimum conditions which are required for the functionality of that enzyme now we'll go into a short history about your enzymes so brazil is in 1836 he have coined the term catalyst now in greek this catalyst word is known as to dissolve in 1878 the kuhne was used the word enzymes now this is to indicate the catalysis taking place in the biological system in 1883 the scientist buckner this scientist have performed have achieved the isolation of the enzyme system from a cell-free extract of your yeast he named that active principle as your zymases so what it is known as this is known as your zymases so which could convert the sugar into your alcohol so for conversion of your sugar to alcohol zymases are required and scientist buckner have coined that in 1926, the James Sumner first achieved the isolation as well as the crystallization of the second enzyme and the name of that enzyme is ureases. That enzyme was extracted from jack bean and they have identified it as your protein. Now see, these are the different classes of your enzymes. So how many classes are there? Total seven different classes of enzymes which are present. The first uh, class is your oxidoreductase. Second class transferases, hydrolases, lyases, isomerases, ligases, and the last one is your translocases. So, this particular classification is based upon their functions, means how they how they work depending upon that they have categorized. So, this is the simple summary of their classification. If you consider the class oxidoreductase, so this oxidoreductase is responsible for transfer of your electron and which results in the oxidation state. And for that, the example is your dehydrogenases. Second class is your transferases, which transfer the functional group from one molecule to another molecule. And for that, the best example is of your phosphorylases and your kinases. Third one is your, uh, fourth one is your hydrolases, which is actually responsible for breakdown of your covalent bond, which are with the help of water. So for that, the example is your proteases. The next type is your lyases, which shows the breakdown of your covalent bond without water or without oxidation. Then that we are going to consider as your lyases. And the example for your lyases enzyme is your decarboxylases. Next one is your isomerases, which is actually required for rearrangement of the bonds within the molecule. And for that, the example is your mutases and last one is your ligases which is generally used for the formation of your covalent bond between the two large molecule so these are nothing but what the classification of your enzymes 
Now in short, we are going to study how many different types of factors which are responsible for the enzyme activity. Means certain factors are there which enhances the enzyme activity. In that, we are going to first study about your concentration of your enzymes. So, factor that influences the velocity of the reaction is nothing but what? The concentration of enzyme. If you see this particular graph, so this graph is against enzyme concentration versus the rate of reaction. This is your straight line graph. What does it indicate? It indicates that the direct relationship between the enzyme concentration and the rate of reaction. This particular property of your enzyme means what about the substrate concentration which is commonly used in the diagnosis of the different types of diseases. The next factor is your temperature. So here the velocity of an enzyme reaction it increases with increase in temperature. But if you keep on increasing the temperature, what will happen? If it exceeds to 60 degree, 70 degree, your protein, your enzyme may get denatured. So, for every particular enzyme, you have a, we have a specific type of optimum temperatures. So, optimum temperature means what? At a temperature at which your enzyme is showing the maximum activity. If you plot a graph of enzyme activity at different temperatures, so it will give you a bell shaped curve. Okay. In case of that, based upon that graph, we are going to calculate the Q10. Now, what do you mean by Q10? Q10 is your temperature coefficient and it is defined as the increased enzyme velocity when the temperature is increased by 10 degrees Celsius. So, this is important definition. If you see this graph, so this graph is indicating what? This graph is indicating increased rate of reaction, right? So, that rate of reaction is increasing at a particular temperature. Now, this temperature is your optimum temperature. After that, if you keep on increasing the temperature, your enzyme activity is decreasing. So, for majority of the enzyme, your Q10 is ranging between 0 degrees Celsius and 14 degrees Celsius. So, high increase in temperature will result in the higher activation energy of the molecule and more molecule collision and interaction for the reaction to proceed faster. So, for most of the enzyme, your optimum temperature ranges between 40 degrees to 45 degrees. However, some enzymes are also active even at 100 degrees Celsius. So, those are your special enzymes which you can use for different types of re uh, molecular biology reactions. So, in general, when the enzymes are exposed to, when the enzymes are exposed to a temperature above 50 degrees Celsius, the denaturation will occur. So, that denaturation means what? Your enzymes will no longer remain active. The third factor is your pH. Now, pH is also work same as your temperature. So, here the hydrogen ion concentration considerably in influences the enzyme activity and again here also you are going to observe this bell shaped graph. So, each enzyme has an optimum pH at which the velocity of enzyme is velocity of the reaction is maximum. So, below and above that pH, the enzyme activity is much lower and at certain extreme pH, you will be able to see no particular reaction caused by that enzyme. So, a specific pH at which you are, you will be able to see the maximum activity will be considered as your optimum pH. So, most of the enzymes of higher organisms, they shows the maximum activity, the optimum activity around your neutral pH which ranges between 6 to 8. So, there are many exceptions are also there, certain pepsin is also there, phosphatases are also there, alkaline phosphatases are also there which are not following the rule. The next one is your effect of product concentration. Now, product means what? Once your enzyme is reacted with your substrate, it is giving you the product. So, if the product concentration increases in your sample, what will happen? That we are going to see under the effect of product concentration. So, the accumulation of your products is generally decreases the enzyme velocity. 
so for certain types of enzymes the products combine with the active site of enzyme and form the loose complex and hence it will inhibit the enzyme activity so in living system this particular type of inhibition is generally prevented by a quick removal of your product formed next type or next factor is your concentration of substrate now as increase in the substrate concentration gradually the velocity of the enzyme reaction decreases so within the limited range of your substrate level so a rectangular hyperbola if you see here you will be able to see the rectangular hyperbola which is obtained when the velocity is plotted against your rate of reaction right so here we are going to consider the v max so you will be able to see the three different point what does three different point indicates first one is your a second one is your b and third one is your c so a indicates the linear b indicates curve and c indicates almost there is no change so based upon that we will be able to calculate what is the order of reaction so when the velocity of the reaction is almost proportional to the substrate concentration then it is considered as your first order reaction if your substrate concentration is much greater than km then the rate of reaction is independent of your substrate concentration and hence that rate of reaction rather the order of reaction is considered as your zero order reaction enzyme kinetics and k value here the enzyme is represented as letter e substrate is represented as s which combine together and forms product but before that one intermediate state is there and that intermediate state is known as enzyme substrate complex so which is required for your product formation now we are going to see the next factor that is the effect of activators now activators means what which are required to start the reaction so those are known as activators so there are certain enzymes which requires the inorganic metallic cations and those inorganic metallic cations say for example mg2 plus na na plus k plus cu2 plus they required to show the maximum activity of your selective enzymes and those are known as your activators so here the metal will function as your activator and this the velocity of the enzyme will increases so this is required to start the reaction there are two important classes of your uh, activators first one is your metal activated enzymes and second one is your metallozymes now what do you mean by metal activated enzymes these metal activated enzymes these metals are not tightly held by your enzymes and can be exchanged easily with your other ions and what are the best examples for your metal activated enzymes here i have given you two examples one is your atipases and second one is your enolases the next type next uh, category is your metallozymes now these enzymes hold the metal rather tightly which are not readily exchanged this is the difference between your metal activated enzymes and metallozymes in metal activated enzymes your metal is not tightly held by the enzyme and in case of your metallozymes your metals rather tightly bind to your enzyme so what are the examples of your metallozymes the best example is alcohol dehydrogenase carbonic anhydrase alkaline phosphatases so these are the examples of your metallozymes next factor which affects the effect uh, activity of your enzyme is time so here under ideal optimal conditions like optimum ph optimum temperature the time required to complete that reaction is comparatively less so if you want to achieve a better reaction better reaction then you have to provide the optimum conditions to complete the reaction so variations in the time and variations in the parameter will lead to what will lead to interrupted reaction or interrupted results so for that the last point is the effect of light and radiation exposure to the enzyme to ultraviolet beta gamma and x rays the inact it will inactivate certain types of enzymes so due to that what will happen the formation of your peroxides and hence the activity of enzymes will 
stock so whenever you are standardizing any enzyme you also as you are finding the activators for that enzyme you also have to work on their inhibitors which stops the activity of your enzymes so this is about your enzymes thank you very much for your patience listening